Hello, traders. Gary Wagner here. It is currently 11.55 in Honolulu, 5.55 in New York on Monday, third day of October 2022. And this is uh, the daily report for gold and silver. Today, lower treasury yields on U.S. debt instruments such as 10-year notes and 30-year bonds declined, and so did the dollar. That sparked a strong rally in the precious metals. Gold gained 2.19%, or $36.60, with the most active December contract currently fixed at $1,708.60. We can see the dollar decline, which was almost a half a percent, 0.49%, and the index is currently fixed at 1154 Lastly, a tremendous 9% move in silver, taking it well above $20. After factoring in today's gain of $1.72, the December contract is currently fixed at $20.76. Today, I want to look at three different types of charts. We typically use Japanese candlesticks on our show rather than bar charts because I believe it gives you much more information without giving anything up. On a bar chart itself, we don't get the relationship as vividly from the open to closing price as either a green candle or red candle. And we can certainly see that when we change our basic candlestick chart into a bar chart. It goes flat against the paper and more importantly, it doesn't convey as much information. But on today's show, I want to look at the Henkin Ashi as well as the three line break chart because those two types of Japanese charts excel in their ability to look at trend, strength of trend, as well as key pivot points. We're looking at a daily candlestick chart of the dollar index. Of course, it's been on a tear, moving up to a high last Wednesday of approximately 11466. That is a 20-year high. On that day, though, it opened at about 114, tracked to the high at 11466, but closed tremendously lower. And if we look at it on a candlestick chart, it's clear that some sort of pivot took place because out of the last four trading days, three of them can be characterized as red candles. In other words, days in which it closed below its opening price. This most recent key reversal was much more visible on the Henkinashi compared to a Japanese candlestick chart. We are looking at a Henkinashi chart of the dollar index. This, of course, out of daily data. What you can see is as the dollar hit these higher and higher values, the body size grew and you also had an absence of lower wicks. What the absence of lower wicks means to an uptrend is that at no point during the trading session did prices cross at or below the midpoint of the prior candle. Then on Wednesday, you get a completely different type of green candle. Very small bodied candle with a large upper and lower wick. And then that is followed by color change. In other words, what you tend to see in a Hankinashi is the fact that whether you've got a strong trend as we had here or a much more moderate trend as we had here, you get a lot of the noise taken out of the market and it makes trends much more visible by taking or fixing the open from the prior day's midpoint price. We have just converted the Henkin Ashi to a three line break chart. Now that type of chart differs from both the Japanese candlestick and Henkin Ashi chart in that the candle is created only under certain conditions which are based on price changes and not on dates. It's analogous to the point and figure chart. The easiest way to look at it is there's three possibilities. A new candle is created when the price continues for a set amount in the same direction. A new candle in the opposite color is drawn when the price changes large enough to warrant a reversal. And the third possibility is no candle is created when the current price does not extend the trend or the change is not enough to warrant a reversal. 
Lastly, this type of chart adds a candle color that is called a projection. And you can see that here in magenta. That is created when the move in a particular stock or commodity, in this case the dollar, exceeds multiple candles. So it is a much stronger reversal. And just as in the dollar chart, when we look at gold, we can see the same kind of movements. In other words, the long extended downtrend had a series of red candles, although they were much more choppy in terms of strength of trend. But we did get a pivot candle when market sentiment changed from bearish to bullish. We then had that followed by large bodied candles with no lower wicks. And of course, the same is true when we look at a three-line break chart of gold. We can see the movement from red to green and our projection, in this case, drawn in dark blue. There are a couple of caveats to these types of charts. One of the things is they do not in any way forecast where these trends might conclude. And on tomorrow's show, we'll look at Fibonacci retracements, as well as identification of tops and bottoms, which are the primary tools that a market technician uses to project or forecast where these current rallies or corrections could conclude. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading. We will talk to you tomorrow for the next daily update and review. Bye-bye.